Hi and welcome to our time of worship for the first Sunday in Lent. I hardly believe that it's almost 12 months since we started doing these. But today I want to look at the first, I look at Lent, the season of Lent, what it means, what it meant, what it means to us today. Um, I am not completely going with lecture for Lent because it goes back over things we've already done. I mean we've already had a time thinking of the Transfiguration which I think is the comes on the third Sunday in Lent again and today's reading for Lent is the baptism of Jesus and I think that's purely because it ties in with the 40 days in the desert and the 40 days of Lent which I shall explain hopefully explain later. Um, so what I've done today um, for our reading, I've used the reading that precedes next week's reading in the lectionary from the Gospel according to St. Mark. So I hope if anybody thinks, whoa, what's he doing here? Um, to me it makes a little bit more sense. Selection of hymns today from most of them are in, well, one of them is in, um, no, start again. Three of them are in hymns and psalms, two of them are in singing the faith, one of them is in neither, but it's by Timothy Dudley Smith, um, a retired Anglican bishop who has written about 400 hymns, a lot of which we've got in our hymn books. This one we haven't, but I think it fits in very nicely for today. And the first one that fits in nicely for today, reading my order of service, um, we are thinking now I am sure during this pandemic of healing, healing um, with the vaccination, healing with more people surviving the terrible um, disease than not and we start off as we sing and it is um, 151 in hymns and psalms when Jesus the healer passed through Galilee observant ones of you will notice change in the background. I was getting a bit of earache from Paul and she said why have you got that background? Um, well I'm 
in my little studio where I, my hobby is painting, where I do my painting, and that's my door curtain. Helps keep the trap down, sort of thing. So um, that's why that was there. Um, but now she's uh, donated this lovely silver brocade curtain so that it looks better and hopefully it'll give me brownie points. There you go. Just a little personal touch. Let's come to a time of prayer. We bring our prayers for confession as usual and our thanks and our praise. We've got a lot to be thankful for for God this week. We've got a lot to praise him for. So, let's pray. Almighty God, King of the universe and creator of all that is. Well, the privilege we have to be able to address you as our Heavenly Father. And it's as our Heavenly Father we come before you now as we think of the events of the past week. Things we've done that are right and proper and we should have done. But you know as well as we know ourselves. And you know there are times that we haven't been the way we should. We know there are times when we could have done a bit better. So for all those times, Father, where we've been in error with you or with our neighbour, we bring them before you now, owning them and with a contrite heart asking your forgiveness. Here then the blessed words of grace, our Saviour said, Look, I am making all things new. Our sins are forgiven. Praise the Lord. And we do praise you, Father. We praise you, especially at this time, this, this, this time of reflection, this time of remembrance, as we enter into the Lenten season. Enter into the time in our church calendar that leads us towards Easter and leads us to the only reason that we can speak to you directly today towards the crucifixion, the resurrection, and the ascension. So we we praise you for your mighty works. We praise you for whilst we were still in the throes of sin. You came in human form as a babe in the manger. You came as your son Jesus to save us. And we praise you and we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that the rollout of the vaccination in this country is going so well. We thank you more so than the rollout that the uptake of the vaccine is going far, far better than expected. And we believe that it is you driving people in this way. It's you putting the thoughts in their minds that this is the best way forward for us, as we know it is. We can't think of things like this in the world today without acknowledging that you are in the world today and that you are with us with every decision we make and with every step we take. And for that, Father, we bring you our unending hymns of praise. Our eternal thanks. If we want to do more, we want to make our lives a living prayer of praise and thanksgiving to your greater glory that all might see. That some might inquire of us about our Lord, about our Saviour, about why all need to be saved. 
around the John Wesley said, all need to be saved. All can be saved. All can know themselves saved. And all can be saved at the utmost. And that is the job that you give us. And we thank you that we can do these things in your name. And in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Saviour, Redeemer and Friend, who taught that when we pray, we should say this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we have forgiven those who trespassed against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen amen we're going to sing again now one that i am sure that you all know very well and one that again I think is applicable for our time. This lockdown's been hard and it's going to carry on being hard. It is easier with Jesus, but it's still hard. I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. We come now to our time of scripture. Now as I said I'm not going with the lectionary because it confused me. I know it doesn't take much but it confused me. So I was reading from Mark's account of the gospel of the good news. I'm reading Mark chapter 8 verses 22 to 30. Next week it begins at 31 so I thought it's good to 
take the passage before it. And they came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to Jesus and implored him to touch him. Taking the blind man by the hand, he brought him out of the village, and after spitting on his eyes and laying his hands on him, he asked, Do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see men, for I see them like trees walking around. Then again he laid his hands on his eyes, and he looked intently, and he was restored. And he began to see everything clearly. And he sent him home, saying, Do not even enter the village. Jesus went out along with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way he questioned his disciples, saying to them, Who do people say that I am? They told him, saying, John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, but others one of the prophets. And he continued questioning them, but who do you say I am? Peter answered and said to him, You are the Christ. And he warned them not to tell anyone about him. You are the Christ. Wonderful words there. Let us come now again to a time of prayer. This time we're going to bring our prayers of intercession for the world and petition for ourselves. As we think of the state of the world, the upset in insurrection animal, the um, princess held captive in Dubai. And of course the pandemic that rages on and continues to do so and will continue until basically the whole world is vaccinated. And we can only do that with God's help. So let us pray. Almighty God, we do indeed pray for this world of yours. When we read from your holy book that in the six days that you created it, as you created each individual thing, you looked down and you saw that it was good. And that was the evening and that was the morning. The next day you created again. And finally on the sixth day you created us in your image. And gave us dominion over all living things on the earth. Gave us dominion over all that swim in the sea. Gave us dominion over all that fly in the air. Gave us the job of caretakers of your creation. But how we've abused that position. We are helping to destroy the earth. Species of creatures are becoming extinct. Stocks of fish are at times overfished. And man has turned against man. There seems very little love in this world today. So Father we pray for a healing. We pray for a healing of the world. We pray for a time when all nations can come together in peace. We, we, we claim and we pray for the messianic age that the Jewish people foresaw. When wars are no more, all are at peace and all recognise you for who you are. We pray especially for the princess in Dubai. We pray that the, if the reports we have heard are right, that something can be done. We pray for the people of Manama as the army are still in control. 
And we pray for the world as it struggles to compensate for this virus with vaccination. We pray for the leaders of the world that they make just and merciful decisions so that even the poorer countries can receive the vaccine that we so badly need them to have. And Father, we come closer to home as we think of our closed churches, our circuits, our preachers, our ministers, our congregations, our members, our friends. It seems so long now since we've shared a cup of tea at the end of a service. bit of gossip, friendly chat, a warm handshake. We pray for the return of those times, but we pray for the return of those times when it is safe to do so. So in the meantime, Father, I want to pray for all of our churches and circuits, that all are kept safe and us all can find some way of worshipping. Though it feels strange to worship individually rather than corporately where we can all join together in the hymns and the prayers, we still know that you do hear us. You do hear our hymns of praise our hymns of thanks and our requests in our prayers. So we offer you these in Jesus' name. Amen. We come now to <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, we come now to our next hymn. Here on the Threshold by Timothy Dudley Smith. Timothy Dudley Smith is 94 years old, born, 20, born on Boxing Day in 1926. I have got a few notes that I, I wanted to use. He was ordained a deacon in 1950 and became a priest in 1951. He was the Archdeacon of Norwich from 73 to 81 and the Bishop of Thetford from 81 to 91. And he didn't retire until 2019, when he was 92. He's written about 400 hymns. No music, but he has set a lot of his hymns to known tunes. Which I think is really good at times, because we know the tune, and then we only need to learn the words, don't we? So we're going to sing his hymn now. Here on the threshold. I hope you enjoy.
Matthias, I said at the beginning, is the first Sunday of Lent. Epiphany finished on Tuesday on Mardi Gras, which translated means Fat Tuesday, where traditionally you ate up all the good things in the larder so that you started on Ash Wednesday in sackcloth and ashes, or as they still do in some uh, Roman Catholic Church, they saw the cross in ash on your forehead. A time of reflection, a time of repentance, a time of thought, and a time of fasting. And a very complicated time. It has changed so much over the years. It is not a biblical authority, it's not a biblical tradition. The first church, the early church, the church the disciples started, used to celebrate what we now call Easter, the crucifixion, the entombment, the resurrection, every week. It used to fast on Friday, the day of crucifixion, and celebrate on the Sunday. But it was every week. Now it started changing with the Council of Nicaea in 325. Now I'm not going to go through the whole lot and give you a history of Lent, but it has changed an awful lot. Fasting was only ever until the hour of none, which was originally nine o'clock, no, three o'clock, that got brought forward over the years, or over the decades, to 12 o'clock, and none got changed to noon. You weren't required to fast every day, just some days, but especially on Friday. And even today, if we think about it, Lent is too many days to fit into 40, isn't it? My maths is just gone. Lent doesn't include Sundays. So if you've given up chocolate, or whatever your favourite thing is that you've given up for Lent, you can have it with a free conscience on Sundays or after 12 o'clock every day of the week if you want to. It's up to you. I don't believe in giving things up for Lent. I believe in taking things up for Lent. And you know what's coming next. I believe that we should not go around in sackcloth and ashes, although it would be a novel idea, but I think it's a bit cold for that. But instead of giving up, let's take up. Let's do what our Lord says. Let's take up our cross and follow him. Let's spread the word. We're going through Lent. We're going to go through Lent until we come up to Palm Sunday and Holy Week. And we're going to end up with Easter. Let us try this year, wherever we can, and yes, I know it is very, very, very difficult this year because of social distancing and stay home, protect the NHS safe lives. But where we can in our letters, our emails, to friends, to relationships, whatever, where we can, we should be able to promote the season of Lent. It's a season for us Christians to reflect. To reflect on the past 12 months and this year, there's an awful lot to reflect on, isn't there? It's been such a strange year. 
I find it hard to think that I did a Easter service via this media last year and I will do one this year. I pray that 2022 we can be together as we used to be. Who knows? Or as some people might say, God knows, but he hasn't told me. So as we go through Lent, let us let's make plans, let us reflect on our lives, let us reflect on our Christian lives before the start of this pandemic. Let us still reflect to see if there's anything we could do a little bit more, a little bit better, a little more often. A very great friend of mine, a worldwide evangelist, once said that going to church every Sunday has got no more chance of making you a Christian than going to McDonald's has got a chance of making you into a beef burger. We don't go to church to become a Christian. We go to church because we are Christian. We go for our Christian fellowship. And that's what I miss terribly at the moment. I really do. And I presume you do too. So it's something else to reflect upon in Lent. And you don't know what you've got until you haven't got it anymore, do you? I mean, we used to go to chapel. We, when I say we, I mean this we and we, all of you. We go to chapel every Sunday we were able. Really without giving it a thought. And when I say that, I don't mean we went without thinking that we went just because we're supposed to go. We went because we wanted to go. We wanted to see our Christian friends. We wanted to worship God in the company of other Christians. But we never thought there would come a time when we couldn't do it. We've often had in talks and thought and said in prayers about the countries where Christianity is still illegal, where you can get churches closed, where people can be imprisoned or even executed just for being a Christian. We never thought the time would come when somebody said, stop, you can't go to church this week or next week or the week after. a shock isn't it? It's a shock when we suddenly realise that we as far as church or chapel as I prefer to call it, chapel being the building, church being the people in it, that's my definition. Um, we never thought the time would come when we would be prevented from corporate worship. We've read books about Bibles being smuggled into Russia, into China and into other places in the world where people have had to worship secretly, where people couldn't be open about their Christianity, where they couldn't build a church. But we never thought that we would be partly in that situation, that we would be prevented from going. And on the times when we tried, after the first lockdown, when we tried going back, it just wasn't the same, was it? Sitting there, six foot away from each other, wearing a mask, not being able to join in the singing. The best we could hope for was to mumble the Lord's Prayer through muffled masks 
and the odd Amen. And when the service was over, please leave the building, please leave the car park, go home, straight away. Don't mix, don't mingle, don't chat. It's not what we used to, is it? It's something we had to give up against our will. But surely it should make us appreciate our chapel. Appreciate the building, appreciate the fellowship. Even, I don't mean this person, even appreciate our ministers and our preachers. Because there are countries that are like this all the time. So we don't need to give any, anything for Lent because we've already given up so much this year. But we need to take up the Christian cross. Hold the banner high. As it hold high the Christian banner, it must not suffer loss. And this is what we can do, with or without our weekly meetings. And this is what we should do. Peter answered and said unto him, You are the Christ. You are the Messiah. You are the start of the Mess Messianic age. Let us try and bring in that Messianic age. Let us bring in fellowship. Love thy neighbour. Love one another in all that we do. Let us be thankful and praise our Lord for what we've had. This freedom of worship. And let us pray for a time when we can return to it. But when we do return to it, Just in a way, like Easter, like we go through Lent, possibly giving up something. You rejoice at the end of Lent. You've given up chocolate for 40 days or maybe more if you haven't had it on Sundays. And you get a nice big Easter egg. Let us, when we get back into our chapels, appreciate and love one another even more. And let's appreciate and love all those around us who don't yet go to our chapels. Let's bring them in. Let us take this time of Lent as we look through these weeks now until we get to Palm Sunday. Then let's take this time as a time of reflection. A reflection of our walk, our personal walk with Christ. Where are we now to where we were last year? Has our faith grown? Has our Christianity grown? Has our closeness to God grown? Do we pray more? Do we talk to God more? Do we walk around the house and get hymns more? Because we can't do it on a Sunday. Let us take this time, not as it was at once deemed the time of repentance, time of regret. But let's take it as a time of reflection. A time of thanksgiving for what we've had and the hope of looking forward to what is to come. Jesus is our hope. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. No, that's not our final hymn today. I have used it before. I will use it again. But that is the way that we should be. And we all get down. We have days during this lockdown when this is all there is. 
how long is it going on? At our age, will we ever get back to anything different? Don't know, do we? We can't see the future. God's already there. He knows our future. And that for me is good enough. So let us think as we walk through Lent. If you feel that you want to go off something, if you feel you want to fast on a Friday until noon or 3 o'clock or 6 o'clock or 9 o'clock in the evening, do so. It's entirely up to you. But let us take this time to reflect on our Christianity. Reflect on how it affects our lives. Reflect on what we do. And reflect on the fact that we know that Jesus goes through it with us. Every step of the way. So we're going to finish today with lovely hymn to both of our hymn books. No, we just finish only in here. These both hymn books. The kingdom of God is justice and joy. Thank you for being with me. I'll be here again, God willing, next Sunday as we look at the second Sunday in Lent. And I'll try and find some more hymns that we know and maybe hymns we can learn. You know, there's some wonderful hymns out there, some that I've never heard before. I hear on the threshold, I've never heard it before, but I think it's lovely. Stay safe. May God truly bless you all. May he make his face to shine upon you. 
and may that incredible love of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you until he either comes or calls and then forevermore. God bless you. God willing, I'll see you next week. Amen.